Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to cover the next part of this series within this security platform. So last week we went with the installation and this week we are going to set up the vulnerability detector. For those that are not familiar, this will be a way to determine what software is installed on the operating system that we are looking to monitor. And then de depending on if there is a CVE or if it is vulnerable, it will report back to us. And that as the administrator allows us to get a quick snapshot of the software that is on our, our or within our infrastructure. And then we could go ahead and update it or get it to the team, to the appropriate team for them to update it. So with that being said, let's get started. In addition to that, I would like to quickly cover the security configuration assessment or SCA within this platform. Uh, what that will do for those that are not familiar, it will scan our machine. So in this case, it would be an Ubuntu machine. And depending on the configurations that we have set, it will determine if it is a pass or a fail based on the benchmarks set by CIS. Uh, for those that are not familiar with it, definitely give this a look. It is a good way to get your environment up to standard. Um, there's different benchmarks and they even provide a golden image that you could start off with. So definitely give that a look, at least to get your environment in a more secure position. Um, but with that being said, let's get right into the vulnerability detector portion. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is head over to active agents. And in here, we will see the two agents that we had installed last week. And today we are going to focus on the Linux machine. The Windows machine, as you will find with some research online, it does give you some problems and it is not straightforward. I have tried probably a few hours, put a few hours into it, trying to get it to work. Um, and I would never was never able to get any information back from the agent. And I tried multiple configurations and I, I had no luck. But with the Linux, it is a straightforward setup. There is other s solutions out there that we could use um, to monitor our Windows software. But for this purpose of this video, we are going to focus on Linux. So if we go into our Linux agent and we head over to the, to the top, we will notice there's a vulnerabilities tab. We'll click on that tab. As of right now, the last full scan is empty and there's no critical high, medium or low vulnerabilities or findings found. Uh, so we have to get that enabled and get that agent reporting back to our server. So there is a few ways to go about it. You could SSH directly into the machine, but also I found that you could also go right into um, within the UI. You're going to go to management and then configuration. And in here we could edit the configuration. This is the same thing that you would do on the Linux machine if you were actually SSH into it or into this server. And you go to like var, I think it's the var directory, OSEC, etc and then osec.conf i think is the directory um, but either way go in here and you could just do it just from here and then let's do a control f and we'll search for vulnerability and as you can see it is right here so from default vulnerability detector enabled is set to no so let's go ahead and turn that to yes and then depending on the operating system that we are looking to scan you will also have to set some options there and in this case, we are doing dealing with Ubuntu. Um, so yes, we will just turn enabled to yes. And if we were working with Red Hat or, or another Debian operating system, um, down here at the bottom, we have Windows. You just do the same thing and you will turn that on. We're gonna hit save. Once you save that, the next thing that you want to do hit is hit restart manager after the configuration has been updated. And this will take a few minutes. All right, so once that is completed and you wait a few minutes, you also have to wait a few more minutes. Um, so if you go back to your home and you click on active agents, go into the Ubuntu server again, and in here hit vulnerabilities. For about five to 10 minutes, I would say, while it's performing the scan, because you just turned it on and it's adding all the CVEs to the database and then comparing it, it, you will see the dashes here and you will see last full scan is empty. After five to 10 minutes, this will populate with some information and then you could find all of the vulnerabilities down below. Um, and that's pretty much it, it's pretty straightforward. So this obviously pulls it from the various databases such as the National Vulnerability Database 
and um, depending on the software that is installed and if it is considered a vulnerability it will be reported here based on the severity severity levels and there's just pages and pages this is just a virtual machine that i don't do not have updated and it is irrelevant but it is just so we could i could highlight it and show it to you guys and then if you wanted to filter it you could do something simple as severity equals high or we'll do critical something like that and then we can get two pages of just the vulnerabilities that are considered critical that is one way to filter it out you could also build a dashboard and then so this way every time you log on you could see that um so that's pretty much it if you go back to the ubuntu tab and then if you wanted to see where that information is kind of pulled from it is from my understanding it is pulled from the inventory that it finds or pulls from the agent and these this is all the software that is installed on this machine and based on the version numbers is what is determined if it is a vulnerability or not based on the database and the cves in that database so that is a quick way to determine how vulnerable your machine is based on the software that is installed and the next thing that i wanted to quickly take a highlight or i want to quickly take a look at if we go back to the ubuntu tab and as i mentioned we want to take a look at the SCA or the security configuration assessment and that is based on the cis benchmark and as you can see here the cis ubuntu linux benchmark this was something that i didn't add uh, based on the agent and the information that it finds i'm assuming that's how it decides the benchmark that is going to be used and this is set up by default i had no configuration changes to get this set up and from this screen you could just get a quick snapshot at how many findings there are so there's 76 that have passed and 104 that have failed and two that are not applicable maybe based on the version or the operating system and that gives us an overall percentage of 42 percent if you click into that you could get a better idea again you could if you wanted to just do just to kind of see what has failed and filter it out that way and then you, and then you could even export it up here um, so you could go through it that way or give it to the people that need this information for those that are already in the field this is kind of straightforward you probably have experience with this in other software such as tenable or or even uh, rapid 7 and the other ones that are out there but it is definitely something worth taking a look at uh, it is all free and open source and it's easy to set up so that is something the two things that i wanted to cover today so that's going to close out today's video i hope you were able to take something away as we pr progress in this um, mini series of working with the security platform i'm going to continue on with this series as i am enjoying it a lot learning the different aspects and features of this platform uh, next week i think we are going to look a little bit deeper we're going to it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer video and we're going to dive into some integrations maybe set up some alerts um, so for instance one thing i'm thinking about is set up an alert based on maybe an ssh from an ip address that is restricted and then based on that alert when it gets generated either perform an action or notify us through slack which is an integration that we can work with so that's just an idea i'm still coming up with exactly how i want to lab it out and and get some information out to you guys as you as i said in the in the beginning of this video and as i just mentioned it is just something that i'm playing around with and uh, i'm enjoying it a lot so i hope you guys enjoy this series if you have any ideas or any any questions as uh, as this goes on just let me know in the comments below and as always Never stop learning.